Hi, my name is Morten Yeh from flipnormals.com and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about linear workflow and gamma correction. Uh, this, is a, this is a very confusing topic for a lot of people, especially when you're starting out with 3D. It, it tends to be something that a lot of people avoid. I think, yeah, inherently because it's a confusing topic, it just seems too, too far out for people to sort of grasp the concept. But it's actually pretty simple when you boil it down. And, and this tutorial is going to be focusing a little bit on the technical side because um, we really have to talk about that. But as much as possible, I'd, 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 I'd like to avoid that just so it makes more sense to, to more people. Um, linear workflow was something I got a little scared of when I started working with 3D, and I think it took me about four years to actually get back to it. And it's it, it was because of the sort of technical nature of it. But that being said, what most people really need to know about it is that it makes everything better. But why exactly does it make everything better? Uh, I, have a, I have an image that I rendered out without gamma correction applied to it. Um, it is also important to, to note that gamma correction and linear workflow are not the same thing. Linear workflow is a is a way of working and gamma correction is something you do to your images. So this is an image with with no gamma correction and this is an image that's had a gamma curve applied to it and you can see that we have a lot more depth in it. The shadows aren't as as dark, and our highlights aren't as over bright as as our other image. Um, but let's let's start off with the term gamma correction. This is uh, everything sort of starts with how your images are displayed, and in this tutorial we're just going to focus on our monitors. But this really affects all devices that can display images. So your monitor displays an image at a certain light intensity from, from black to white, low to high, and this light intensity is determined by the voltage that your screen receives. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen, seen this curve, and this is the sort of standard gamma correction curve that, that's, that you'll find around, and a lot of people look at it and, and it doesn't really make sense. So let's try to to dive into it and see what the different elements of this curve actually are. So these are our gamma curves. And ideally what we would like is that the amount of voltage that we give our screen is equivalent to the intensity of the light that we receive. Unfortunately the world doesn't work like this. So what ends up happening is that we end up with a curve more like the second one instead of this like linear progression where 50% would be 50%. If we look at the second curve, we can see 50% were not really equivalent to 50%. Um, so imagine you put this image into Photoshop and you apply a similar looking curve to this. It would really darken down your, your image a lot, but keep sort of the brights. And if we look at this intensity wise, we can see our black grains now gets a lot of attention. Um, and we can see our middle gets very bright and our brightest parts start to blow out. And this is where the term gamma correction comes in. If you look at our third curve, you can see the dotted line is the inverse curve of our, of our power law curve. And the inverse curve of that has a gamma of 2.2, and our, our other curve has a, has a gamma value of 0.4545. And all this is to make our images look normal. That's really all the technical stuff that we need to know. Um, so if we, uh, if we take a look at our previous image, this might be familiar to a lot of you. So if you render out and your image looks dark like this, like the natural, your natural instinct would be to, you know, just apply more light to it. So we try to apply more light to it. And this sort of gets rid of of some of our darks, but but not really. It still looks kind of crap. Um, but actually, there's nothing wrong with the image in the first place. This the problem lies with our monitors because most of our most of the monitors are are configured 
um, to sRGB or standard RGB space. And what we're looking at is not an sRGB image. It's kind of like putting on glasses with a different prescription or like glasses when you don't need them. So you're like stuff can be kind of blurry and you get the gist of what's happening, but you can't quite make out all the details. So in order to view our image correctly, we have to apply our gamma correction to it. And we end up with an image like this. But this is not the image from our beginning. So here are the two images side by side. Our the lower image is the image from the beginning and the top one is the new one. So what's what's happening in the top one is that because we're using textures um, and we're applying a gamma correction again to the image, we're getting a double gamma correction. This happens because images that you find online, like JPEGs, PNGs, stuff like that, most likely already have a gamma correction burned in directly into the image. This doesn't apply to floating point images, such as HDRIs or EXRs, because they are by definition already linear. I mean, they might have had a curve applied to them or some sort of correction, but they are by definition linear. So when we import our textures into our 3D package and render it, we end up with a result like this. And in order to combat this, we have to make sure that we linearize our textures. And most 3D packages allow you to do this internally. So when we render again, we end up with our correct looking image with nice light, our textures aren't washed out, and everything is great. And just to simplify it for you, here's a, a pipeline chart. And as you can see, the floating point images, HDRIs, EXRs are already um, linear with a gamma of 1. But the color swatches inside of your software and your images that you import uh, need to be linearized. And their gamma in the beginning is 2.2 and we need to linearize it to make the gamma 1.0. And then you can sort of pipe that into your pipeline, start your shading, your lighting, which is already uh, linear. Everything internally in your 3D package already works linearly. So shading, lighting, your rendering is already linear. And then what you want to do is you want to export your image linearly. So with something like an EXR, then what, then you can then pull that into your compositing software and do your, your sRGB conversion. So applying a gamma of 2.2 to it to make the image look correct. And again, I think it's important for for people to keep in mind that linear workflow is a way of working. Um, it's not necessarily right or wrong, but in a lot of cases, it will make your life a lot easier. Uh, it gives your, your images a lot more depth and you have a lot greater value range. And it's especially helpful for interior shots where you need to constantly pump in more light if you're not working linearly. Um, but yeah, so I hope this tutorial has been useful for you and if you have any further questions just uh, send us an email and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks!